everyone, I am Betts Golden. Thank you so much for joining me. Today I'm gonna to show you how you can actually utilize your fast drying paints that are a little bit uh, difficult to pull in those dry summer months if you live in the desert like me. And then also how you can utilize your open acrylic paints which are slow drying and they're easier to pull in the summer like I am. But sometimes you do want your things to dry fast and sometimes you want things to dry slow on the same piece. So we're gonna combine the best of both worlds today. Um, but before we get started, I just want to ask you if you haven't subscribed to my channel to please go ahead and do so. Also, make sure you hit that bell so you can get any notifications on when I might have a new video coming out. And then if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below in the, during this whole process. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and feel free to share. It always helps me out. So without further ado, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a scene today. We're going to lay the basis of the scene down today then tomorrow we're going to go in I'm going to show you how you can add in some detail and just finish it off this is going to be a really whimsical bright piece and I want to create sky so I'm going to be using some white gesso as well as my Dina Wakely acrylic paint in sky I'm just going to take some of this and put it on my um plate and the plate that I'm using is a I believe this is a, about an 8 by 10 plate by gel press all my links I do have provided for you down below so the gesso is a relative quick dry type medium which is what I want because I just want this to be the basis of what we're gonna do and I am just wiping this off on my gel press plate like so trying to get it cleaned off a little bit go over put it in the water then I'm just going to take and put some of this sky down now what this does is this not only primes your surface for the paint but it also um, it also will give a nice sky texture now as you can tell that is super duper like that's a lot of paint and I don't want that much paint. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull out another plate and I'm going to dump the excess onto this little five by seven plate and I'll just do another pull with this on this plate. All right. So I'm going to put that there. I'm going to wipe the excess off onto that plate as I get this plate covered with my gesso. And this one is already ready to be pulled on this side. So I'm just going to lay that out and then I can even clean some more off of the back, which I think is fun to do. Still. That's a little bit too much paint for my liking, so I'm gonna continue on. That's kind of the color that we're gonna get as we continue on. So I'm just going to continue to pull some of that paint and put it over on this one. Now I'm starting to get the coverage that I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one down first. Now, if by chance this is too, I kind of want this to be a little bit smaller than my uh, my paper that I'm using that's just how I want it to want it to work because I will cut it down later all right then I'm gonna go ahead and just place this one over here do that pull as well and this will leave a chalky finish once it dries more so than if I didn't um, use the gesso with it and it just primed the surface so I basically killed two birds with one stone I gave a fun background for my picture that I'm going to use on here and I also um, primed the surface so I can use less paint on my gel press and it's going to work beautifully so from here I'm just going to take and just lift that one up and then again right here kind of you know remove some of this as I can not too concerned about that and now we're gonna go ahead move down on the table 
and we're going to actually use the gel press stamps this that took I have. This literally less than five minutes to dry and I just love the background piece for this and it's supposed to look like a sky. Now what we want to do from here is we actually want to go ahead and build our background pieces in first and then we'll build on top of it. So what I'm going to do for this one is I want to add a bunch of texture in my elements. So I'm going to be utilizing this comb for the tree trunk and I'm also going to be utilizing the small bubble wrap as well as the big bubble wrap in my tree. For the um, uh, this little guy, this cloud, I am going to be pouncing just with this open sponge. Now, it is dry here, so I'm going to go ahead and use my open acrylic on this in my white. Oops, that was pink. That would have been bad in my white, and these are slow drying at, um, acrylics, so that's why I'm using that for this. And I'm just going to take my small brayer, because this is a rather small gel press stamp, and I'm just going to brayer it out. And as you notice, I lift that brayer up each time, and that's a really nice coverage. I'm gonna go in just with this piece and just kind of add in some fun texture. I'm going to be able to probably get a couple ghost prints off of this, so I am just going to randomly place my clouds around on this page just to give it a sky. And that one kind of disappeared into the background. Again, it is white, so not too shocking that it did that and like I said tomorrow in tomorrow's video we're gonna go through and we're just gonna bring those things forward again what I mean is is um, we're gonna add details to this piece and bring those things that may look like they got lost forward again so you'll be able to see them once again and I want to add just a tiny bit more and again, I'm picking up my brayer. You can go forward or backwards every time. I'm not necessarily rolling it back and forth. I'm rolling it, picking it up, rolling it, picking it up. Okay. And then let me go ahead and just do this one over here again. And this time I'm, I'm not adding any texture in. Really like what that looks like. And I'm cleaning off the brayer on my little cloud stamp. And then I'm just going to do one kind of up here off of the page. Now remember, I can go through and cut this all down later, so I'm not real concerned about the edges on this page. All right, now from here I want to go ahead and I want to create my tree trunk because that's going to be the next thing. So I'm going to brayer off this because I'm going to be utilizing this piece here and this brayer. And this is slow drying, so I, I probably should be a little bit more careful with where I'm putting that. Shouldn't set things on it, I should say. And for this piece, I'm just going to take and use, I'm going to actually, um, I was thinking about using a red on this, but I actually think I want to use a ancient on this so it's gonna be a dry a quick dry on it I'm gonna to have to work a little bit fast so in order to make this work I want to take and just brayer it up like that and so I'm brayering it kind of off of the gel press plate And then I just want to take and remove some of that. Um, so I don't want it to be completely, I want there to be a little bit of definition to it. So I'm going to remove some of that, make it give it some curves, make it look more like a tree trunk, go in with this, and then I'm just going to add some lines. And then on top of this, I'm gonna wait for that to kind of set up for a minute. I'm gonna just add 
a little bit of yellow. I mean, a little bit of the, um, actually, you know what? I think the yellow might be kind of cool. I'm gonna use the yellow on this on top. Like so. I'm gonna brayer that out again. And then I'm just gonna take and remove once again along my edge, right there, some of that paint. Because I want it to look like a tree trunk, right? You feel me? All right. Now I'm gonna take it and just place this. I'm not gonna put it all the way on the bottom because I do wanna put some, actually I will put it on the bottom. I can have the grass right on top. And then let's see what kind of texture we get by utilizing those two paints together. I have the slow dry on top and then the um, regular acrylic on the bottom. All right, so I wanna go ahead and just probably pull through a little bit more of that yellow right up here, actually. Let me add in some of that ancient. And I'm gonna go in with a brush this time and just brush it in. That way I can get in some detail and I can make sure that it hits right where I want it to go and I'm not going outside of those lines. And since your acrylic, since your acrylic block is clear and your gel press is clear, it's pretty easy to line it up and get a really nice line right there. So there's a little bit more color. That's good. Let me go ahead and put down some more yellow. And this one is the open because I want to try to lift some of that ancient there. So let me just go on through here. Just where the ancient is. Then I can a little bit of texture on it, not much. Again, just layering it up. And we're building our trunk. Gonna do it one more time. Pretty happy with that last placement. So now I'm just going through with my paintbrush and I am filling it out lightly. You can still see that texture in there from the comb, which is what I want. Now we're gonna go ahead and add on our grass. I'm not even cleaning my brayer before I start to brayer this out. And I am using my open acrylic in this green. Again, I'll have this all listed down below on where you can find it. All right, and then I'm gonna go through and just add in a little bit of texture with my comb. And we're gonna layer this on top of our tree trunk at the base. And again, I love the fact that I can cut this down so if it's not like perfect, it's not the end of the world. Voila, now we have some grass. All right, so from here I wanna go ahead and build this tree and I know you're thinking, um, this is looking like a hot mess. I totally get it, but Trust me, when it's done, it's gonna be super cute. On the side, I have been cleaning off my stamp, my um, my gel press stamps 
over here. So I do have something going on over there and I'll show you how I'm gonna finish that off. For this next technique, I wanna take this little flower and this is actually from the Faith Impressions line that is out with um, uh, Carrie through Gel Press. This is, it's a Bible journaling line and she has this really great shape and I've discovered that it makes a really, really wonderful um, tree if you just build it. So the first layer that I'm going to do is going to be utilizing just the regular quick dry paints, the regular ones that you can use, all right? I'm just gonna do that because I wanna get that layer down fast and I'm just going to put down the shape of my tree. But if you notice, it is pretty cool. Like it's pulling up some other things from my previous presses. So that's really neat. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just layer this down first, utilizing this uh, Dina Wakely acrylic paint and this stamp. So my tree has a base to it. And again, I use just this Evergreen by Dina Wakely. Now I'm gonna go in with my slow drying paint, the same color that I did the bottom, and I'm going to put some in, in here. And I'm going to utilize on this my bubble wrap. So I have this little bubble wrap and then I have a bigger bubble wrap. So I'm going to definitely hit it each time. And I'm, I was gonna do the green, but then I'm looking and I'm like, you know what, it would be really pretty to have some yellow in as well as maybe some pink or red. So I'm just going to go ahead and start off with this yellow first. And since this is a dry, a dry, um, a slow dry, I am going to have to make sure that I don't overlay too much my paint. All right, so I removed a little bit of that. I'm going to go ahead and just pop this on here and then pop it on here and just, it's just slightly subtle. See what I'm saying? Just gonna give it a little bit of color and we're just gonna go around and just build this up. And I always can get a couple different pulls on it. All right, and then once I have the yellow in, I think that's good, that's what I'm gonna do on the yellow. I'm gonna go ahead and add in my green next. Actually, no, I'm going to add in some of that beautiful pink next. So I'm going to do this color. I'm gonna make sure I don't smoosh it around too much just because I don't want it to blend. Although they're both warm colors, so it should be okay. I'm switching my brayer because this one is still wet. This one's still small, which will be okay. And I'm just, again, I'm lifting up, lifting up. Then I'm gonna go in with my bigger bubbles and I'm gonna pop this one just down here and we'll do it right over here then again this is now dry you have to wait for it to dry and it will dry just because it's an open acrylic and it dries slower doesn't mean it doesn't dry. It will dry. I actually used my heat tool to speed it up because I'm going to be putting green on top of this and I don't want those colors to mix. And if it was wet, it would blend and I would get mud. So this is going to be my last layer in this tree and I'm going to just use my golden open acrylic here with some green and I'm going to add on some different colors. I'm okay 
using the yellow in if it happens to transfer over into the green it's okay that's not going to be a bad thing but I'm just going to sit here and work around my tree covering everything with this green and hitting it with the bubble wrap as I go and what will happen is I will end up with a really cool textured tree. Right, as you can tell, I layered and layered and layered, and now I'm actually gonna go over with this um, belt, this huge bubble wrap, and see if I can't lift some of that paint for some texture, which I did, because it's not dry. And then let's try this one over here. And this may actually transfer some texture and paint because there's some yellow on it. But voila, now we have this tree top that is done. So come back tomorrow. I'm gonna show you how to finish this off. I know that it looks really weird right now, um, but I promise that once we add in the details, it's gonna look like a really fun, whimsical, type tree. So come back tomorrow and we will finish this up. Until next time, I'm Beth Golden.